Hello everybody and welcome back to Apple Gaming SE. This is news and opinion for April 7th through April 13th, 2024. Discussing subs for the channel this week. It looks like I have lost three subs, but then I gained one new sub, so I'm at a net negative of two subs down to 188. So um, my sub this week who joined was Pastel Plays with a Z. You can check out his channel at Pastel Plays 5336, all lowercase, at YouTube on the YouTube. So um, that being said, we'll jump into the stories from here. So Apple could finally get its wish for a federal privacy law. So this, the, basically the meat of this article is that there is something called the American Privacy Rights Act, or APRA, which I find myself completely agreeing with. The biggest part of this is limiting the data that is collected by companies to purposes exclusively for what they will need to provide their products and services. This means Samsung, whose privacy policy is thinner than, we'll say, spider web string, and Google, along with many others, would have to severely limit their data collection practices. I have no doubt that this is still going to receive a lot of resistance as it gets pushed out into the House and into the Senate. There are going to be many lobbyists who will push back against this, but I am still hopeful for the long term. I also think that it should come as no too surprise to anyone that Apple is in support of this because they already limit the amount of data that they collect. There is no doubt that Apple collects data but what they don't do is sell it in an easily identifiable manner to third parties. Apple's business model is not selling advertisements as the primary driver. So Apple also has its own advertising business, of course, in regards to macOS and iOS, uh, and there is anonymized data, which is shared with advertisers. However, because Apple is very wary of finding themselves in a lawsuit for privacy violations, they are very meticulous not to collect anything that they absolutely do not have to. This dovetails nicely into our next article, which is from Apple Insider. It is titled, Apple's collection of user data is hard to stop, also with an addendum article from Alto University. So everything that I just said, I feel like I'd be remiss if I skipped over this story. Apple does not always make it quite obvious what they are and are not collecting. I personally was very surprised to see that some of the results of this study from Alto University. The segment specifically, and I'll just quote it, quote, one example is that users are given the option to enable Siri, but the option only enables whether Siri's voice control is used, and that Siri still collects data in the background regardless of the user's choice. Users have to go into the settings and make changes there to stop the behavior, which the prompt seemingly offers without actually performing. End quote. So I was very much under the impression that if you turned Siri off, that you were also turning off its data collection, or any data collection that Siri performed at least. As Professor Lingdvist points out, this is an area that Apple needs to improve greatly. When you say, I don't want to use Siri, Apple should take the default stance that you are intentionally opting out of data collection by Siri and its services as well. There is... If there's any upside to this article, it does reinforce what I stated earlier, that the data which is collected, it is end-to-end -end encrypted, and only a subset of that data is provided to third parties when users give consent, or for advertising purposes, as I discussed. On some level, I understand Apple's point of view on this. You are buying an iPhone, and so you are explicitly agreeing to a relationship with Apple. So their default mindset is something along the lines of, if you're buying our products, then you trust us with your data. Sometimes that's true, and sometimes it's not. It depends on the person and the situation. And I feel more comfortable with Apple reg regarding my data, personally, because of my time within the company. However, to the general public, as Professor Lingdvis also points out, there is not anything that is publicly obvious about what Apple does and does not do with your data internally once they collect it. So all of that, let's move away from the software and services and move into the hardware side of things. So this is coming from 9to5Mac and Ananda Tech. Uh, TSMC is to open a third Arizona chip plant, and TSMC is going to receive $6.6 .6 billion under the U.S. Chips Act to build a new 2 nanometer fab in Arizona. Uh, Apple will in total be looking at collecting... I'm not sorry, TSMC, not Apple. TSMC will in total be looking at building, getting something along the lines of $11.6 billion in grants and loans from the U.S. federal government. 
So TSMC is moving ahead with a third silicon fab in Arizona. After much work was delayed with the second fab, it was unsure if there would actually be an opportunity for there to be additional fabrication facilities within the U.S. Apparently, a lot of funding has been allocated to TSMC, and they are moving ahead. The second fab is behind schedule, but when it is completed, its second phase, they should be rolling out modern silicon wafers. Hopefully, within the coming decade, our iPhones, Macs, and even other brands' products like AMD and NVIDIA will have their primary silicon produced within the USA. So the part of this is that Apple is partially funding this as well. They are an investor in the uh, TSMC expansion into the U.S., which is why I felt it was necessary to include it in the news. Okay, last topic for this week is coming from the Apple Newsroom and AppleInsider.com. Apple is expanding their repair options with the uh, support or the allowance of used parts in iPhones starting later this year. So what I was originally thinking about when I was including these stories was uh, I was kind of thinking in my head, you know, this is going to end on a not so bad note for Apple. However, I actually have to say that I think this is a great story for Apple owners and small repair businesses. So I think this is a great story to include for Apple. And so we're going to end on a high note. Um, The updates for, this is just for the bullet points on this, uh, the updates for the iPhone self-service program is going to be limited to the to certain iPhone models, don't know which models yet, and that will be later in 2024. You can repair your iPhone using used or scavenged parts. You won't be able to use parts from a device that is activation locked. Apple will not sell used parts, only new parts. Biometric sensors will be able to be replaced with a used part as well. Serial numbers won't be required when ordering parts through Apple's self-service repair program. Logic boards will still require a legitimate serial number to function. Batteries seem to be a mixed bag. There's some confusion regarding this from different stories online. From what I can gather, used, genuine Apple batteries can be swapped between devices, but third-party batteries will still issue a notice that the battery is not a genuine Apple battery and will warn you that it may not produce its peak performance. And lastly, which is the coolest piece of all of this, Your iPhone will now show a service history, so you'll know all of the parts that have been used to fix the phone and if those parts were new or used. Overall, I think this is a win for Apple consumers and products, uh, users, customers, and in time we'll see this expand, hopefully we'll see this expand out to iPads and Macs. I'll be able to buy parts on eBay again to fix my friends and family's iPhones. Yay, I don't know if I'm excited about that or not. I think the biggest thing about this that surprised me, however, is the biometric sensors. I honestly thought, because of the way these sensors operate, that they would not be able to be swappable between devices because your biometric hash data is stored on them. So if you can swap them, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. That being said, I mean, for a long time, it's been known that when you reset an iPhone, everything since the iPhone 4S, when you reset the iPhone, the iPhone itself actually does not, the the NAND flash chip is not actually erased, like it's not actually zeroed out. What happens is the hardware encryption key changes, so it effectively makes everything on the NAND chip, the storage, useless. So it in effect zeroes it out, but doesn't actually do that. So it changes the hardware key and it reformats the storage to APFS, um, and then it uses the... Uh, the either the onboard immutable OS or it'll use iTunes or Apple Music Finder, um, whatever it is, depending on your system, uh, to reinstall the OS from there. So uh, interesting that the biometric sensors are going to be able to be swappable in that regard. I was actually quite quite surprised by that. That has never been allowed before ever until this point. So uh, that's it for news and opinions for this week. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next News and Opinions video coming up next week. And uh, we'll be looking at um, we'll be looking at streaming on Friday and a Saturday of this coming week. So thank you all. Hope you have a great week coming ahead. Take care now. Bye bye.